Michelle, roll call, please. President, Here. 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 Any agenda reorganization tonight? None. Agenda item clarifications, please. Um, can we have an uh, informational item? Um, Rita, can you do your presentation? Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Superintendent Knudsen, uh, Mrs. Green, and members of the public. I thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. Uh, on Monday, October 5th, FUSD welcomed students back on campus for in-person instruction. Additionally, we rolled out an updated FUSD website. Mr. Green, can you put that up? The purpose of the website is to provide clear communication to our community members and to interactively engage families with all that FUSD has to offer. There we go. So the goal of the new look is to provide visitors with ease of navigation, trendy intuitive design, and user experience with the use of more infographics. Also, relevant information of website content, topical visuals and description or topic visuals and descriptions, and using social media as an extension of the district website. The web page has been redesigned to easily navigate sections. So if they can lower that. The search bar that used to be there has been replaced with highly searched relevant sections and can be adjusted as needed. As you scroll down the page, visitors have access to the welcome safe connected section and are able to quickly access all information related to COVID-19, including the data dashboard that is updated as we receive information from the Pinal County Health Department. Each graphic will directly connect the visitor to relevant information as it relates to COVID-19, the mitigation measures, and safety protocols that are communicated, again, by the Arizona Department of Health. The next section further down is our parent hub. As a third of our student population is continuing their learning online, it is imperative that FUSD provide parents with information to assist their students' academic success. In this section, visitors can access Google Classroom, high school information, pre-K through eighth grade resources, and exceptional student services. Additionally, FUSD acknowledges the need for the social emotional health of our students and staff. And working in conjunction with Jody Shagana, the website provides the FUSD community with resources and parent workshops to help them through these challenging times. As you scroll down, more resources are provided in the next section. FUSD latest news and information. Here you can easily click to access free and reduced meal information, community educational events, and the FUSD Building Blocks Preschool Program. Underneath that, below are images of, of the latest flyers that have been shared with our school community, including job openings, and again, free meals for children, and the FUSD Food Pantry. Sorry. Lastly, to the right of the district's main page, all of our recent videos are available for viewing, as well as social media posts from Facebook and Twitter. 
So in sum, the purpose of the new website is to speak to the needs of the school community, to provide timely, engaging, and current information as we experience the hyper growth in our surrounding communities and to potentially attract new students and to recruit quality teachers and staff to FUSD. Thank you for your time and attention. And does anybody have any questions? Yes. I don't know if I'm muted or not. Do we currently, or is this set up to in the future, count how many people are visiting our website and where they're going? We can track that. I can provide that information to you. No, I was just wondering. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes, that data drives our website, so that's important to know where they're going and what they're, they're viewing. Any other questions? Okay. Nope. Thank you for your time. Have a good night. Thank you, Mrs. Zank. Um, Bev and uh, Denise, do you guys want to speak to agenda items 16.3, 4, and 5? Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Superintendent Knudsen and community. Uh, I move that the governing board approve payment of $9,285.71 to Clark Consulting and Training uh, for performance training coaching of district instructional staff as presented. This is an after the fact invoice um, the necessary paperwork was not prepared by an employee of the district assigned to that responsibility. Um, the other item is also an after the fact uh, in the amount of $6,638.90. In both of these instances, um, these are grants. So the individuals have been notified uh, that we're responsible for the paperwork that future grant expenditures will require them to work with our director of federal programs to ensure that they're putting the proper paperwork in place prior to those expenditures. And then 16.5 is Ms. Myers. Did you have any questions in regards to the after the fact? <laughs> yes, um, those individuals were new to their roles and they have been trained on the proper protocol and will have guidance with myself and with our director of federal programs to make sure that they're following procedures. Okay, the next item is 16.5. It's a time of the year um, for the annual financial report. This is for last year. And the annual financial report, it contains the detailed information um, for the school district. Um, it includes the budgeted um, expenditures and uh, it shows the actual expenditures, and it shows salaries, it shows benefits, supplies, purchase services, uh, interest and fiscal charges, capital leases, et cetera, uh, for the district. Um, if you could bring up my uh, PowerPoint, please. Um, basically, what I did is I prepared a, a PowerPoint that shows um, basically, the um, expenditures for the m and and capital, those basic um, funds that we use that you're familiar with. Let's see if you can, can you get, bring it up? Well, I'll go ahead and start. The first slide well, so, okay, here we go. The first slide is, uh, shows your budget to actual for the uh, maintenance and operation budget. And as you can see, it's broken down into regular ed. It shows your special ed and, uh, and uh, voc ed, then transportation and K3 reading program and what the budget is for each one of those cate uh, particular categories. 
And as you can see, uh, at the grand total, we had 62,453,033 dollars that was budgeted. 57,682,834 that was actually spent, and there was 4,770,199 that was actually left. So. Uh, we can't yet ended up pre in pretty good shape, but naturally that was because we were closed for a quarter of the year. Now, one of the things that needs to be taken in consideration with having that much of a carryover um, is that um, 1.9 of that has already been carried over into the new year. Plus, there's an adjustment that the state has already made of $983,991 of that because they're making adjustments in ADM. Because again, there's, uh, you know, they're looking at what's happening with last year at the end of the year with ADM, and then also what's happening this year with the ADM. There's been significant drops in ADM all over the state in uh, K K-12 ADM. And so right now, Ours stands at 983991 And then the additional contingency that's left is basically for any type of reserve right now that we might see in future ADMs. Um, our current budget was built with 9,300 and some in ADM, and right now we're only uh, sitting at about 8,800. Uh, and some on our ADM. So that's a significant drop. And hopefully that number will go up once we start seeing the, the numbers coming in on uh, virtual. Um, is there any questions in regards to that slide? Um, the next one basically shows percentages of your, uh, of the m &O budget based on uh, the object codes, the salaries, what percentage of benefits, utilities, supplies, et cetera. On the next slide, it's showing the maintenance budget by function code, how it uh, breaks out by in, um, instruction, athletics co-curricular, uh, co instructional support, Site, administrator, uh, site administration, district administration, facilities, operation, utilities. Um, there was community education that had to be shifted over into m and this past year because they did not have significant enough revenues to support the program, so that was shifted over. And then there was transportation. So that shows the percentage of um, of um, uh, expenditures that were paid out of the m and by function. Yes? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. The, the 4.2? Uh huh. Yeah. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Um, the next page is our classroom site fund. This is money that can only be used for teacher salaries, and we specifically, I think, a couple of years ago, if you remember, you took action to only include those individuals that are paid out of a function 1000 um, function code. So um, this is for teachers only. Fund 11 is used for base uh, pay. Fund 13 is also used for base pay. And then fund 12 is for performance pay. So you can see what your budget was, what the actual was, and what was left. And on fund 12, that's the that's usually a rollover that's been um, uh, for that's been left for from previous years on performance pay, and so anyway, that the, all those funds have been dwindling down gradually, but they carry over from year to year. 
And then the next slide shows um, unrestricted capital. Last year was the first year that we got some of our cap, most of our capital back. We'll get the rest that we got the rest of it this year. Um, you can see the budget was three point, right around 3.1 million, spent about 1.6, so we got about 1.4 of it that we carried, uh, carried over into this year. And then the next slide basically shows revenues to expense. And this will just show you a general idea um, on the maintenance and operation, your revenues to expense, which is very, very good to have that excess revenue in your m and at this particular time, especially going out for a bond. Because Standard & Poor's, who does your bond ratings, they want to see that they want to see that excess revenue. They don't care about anything else. They want to see that cash in the bank. So, anyway, um, I had, re had put in the request again for the additional uh, levy of uh, taxes um, from the board of supervisor, which helped uh, which helped in regards to maintaining that reserve of cash um, capital. Um, again, those are also levied funds between those two. Standard & Poor's does look at those cash balances, which helps throw out tremendously in regards to the bond ratings. Um, on, the, on the classroom site fund, uh, we're short on cash a little bit. So when we take and do the allocation this year, we'll have to take and make an adjustment in regards to the budget, uh, cutting back uh, $48,000 in regards to the budget, because you cannot budget more than what, what you do in cash, what you have in cash. Um, federal funds, there's still um, some federal funds that are becoming in that are due from the states, so that'll basically come out okay, same way with the state. We got federal reimbursement and state reimbursements that are coming in that came in this year that are not reflected in these numbers. So that's, that's with that. Same way with uh, Sheba's. She had some federal reimbursements that came in in the new year that are not reflected in these numbers. Is there any questions? Okay. Thank you. And then also agenda item 16.6. .6. I don't know if any of you guys have any questions about um, the FUSD, FY21, and Cabot Intergovernmental Agreement. It's something that we have to uh, agree to for our kids to go to uh, Cabot every, every year. I don't know if you have any questions regarding that. That's all we have.
And then some more examples would be student Chromebooks, the carts, the monitors, and the classrooms, network system upgrades. And that is all. You have a detailed uh, summary report. There's a summary of uh, every expense that was uh, that occurred in FY20 and along with the detail of expenses in FY18 and 19 on your spreadsheets. Do you have any questions on those? Uh, Mr. Knudsen, we had a parent request this information. I don't know if you've spoken with them yet, but could you make sure they get this link? That might help some of their questions. Yeah, I already met with them okay. yesterday. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda of Tuesday, October 13th, 2020, work study session, regular board meeting? So moved. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Daly, second by Mr. Thomas. Is there any discussion? Please vote. Okay, motion carries 5-0. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, governing board member reports, Mrs. Solis. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this lovely Tuesday. And I don't have any other comments, just thank you for being here with us. Mr. Johnson. Yes, um, all I'm asking is for the constituents of our district, if you're using social media at this time, I implore you to do so that's going to benefit our teachers and our students. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation going on around there regarding COVID and other things. This isn't the time to play gossip cop. Um, do it for the benefit of the kids. We're trying to do the best we can to keep this a kid's first district. We don't need to run interference against everybody on social media. If you need information, our district's gonna be transparent. We're gonna be honest and we're gonna be upfront. Call the district to get the answers. Don't try to circumvent the system. And if you're making a comment, all I'm asking you, please do it for kids first. Support the teachers, support our students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daly. I'm just glad kids are back in school. I'll leave right. it at that. <laughs> Mr. Thomas? Yeah, likewise, I'm really glad they're back in school. Uh, I want to thank all the uh, staff and uh, the kids for the, the good job they've done, uh, despite the fact that uh, some county agencies want to second guess us, but uh, that's the way it is, and we'll work around it. And I know everybody is up to the task, and uh, we'll deal with it and overcome it. Yeah, I just echo everyone else's comments. I'm glad to be back. Um, it was great to see all the kids returning and the school parking lot's full again. And for the most part, it's been positive. And I will echo what Mr. Johnson said. If you have questions, just contact your site administration. Let us get those handled for you directly instead of just trying to go through different avenues. Directly take it to either the school, te your actual teacher, and then to the site administration. If you have questions after that, then to contact the district office and then we can help you out. But otherwise, thank you everybody for being back and let's keep it safe. Mr. Knudsen? Yeah, it was, uh, it was awesome driving in last Monday seeing Florence Unified buses on the road. And uh, overall, we had a great week. Of course, we uh, did have our, uh, Santan Foothills have a, uh, five positive cases. So we've, we've navigated that. Um, uh, we have had some, some kids test positive and a few people test positive. The county health department is doing their contact tracing. And, and uh, I'll tell you, our goal was to try to allow everyone the choice who wanted to stay online to stay online, teachers and students. Um, and all those teachers and students that wanted to come back in person, we wanted them to have that choice. And... Our kids are happy to be back. The most important thing we need to do is 
People just need to adhere to wearing masks in school. That's what we need to do. And I think if we can do that, we will be fine. If you look at the numbers, since people started seriously taking, taking wearing masks seriously, the, the infection rate and the numbers have dropped like 75% since the spike in July. So as the county health department is doing their tracing, they're asking questions. Did that person have a mask on? Were they trying to safe social distance? Now, I know it's very difficult to safe social distance on a bus, but if everyone can wear a mask, you know what? I think school can, can go on and we can be successful at achieving, uh, having our kids in school. So I would also like everyone to just be nice the most important thing right now is to be nice to everybody. We are dealing with an unprecedented time right now. Nobody has ever dealt with something like this in our lifetimes. So just be nice. Thank you. Okay. Michelle, any calls to the public? No, Madam President. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll second it. Motion was made by Mr. Thomas, second by myself. Is there any discussion? Please vote. We all had to get there, Denise. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, motion carries 5-0. Oops, Michelle, I didn't say that one, my bad. Okay, first reading of policy advisory numbers 672-676 and 677-678. There's nothing on here. No issue, it's, it's just first okay. reading. Does anybody have any questions or anything on that in the comments? Okay, Arizona School Boards Associate Delegate Assembly nomination for one board member to serve as delegate and one to serve as alternate. I recommend Steve Johnson be the delegate and Denise Gunther be the alternate for the Arizona School Board Conference Delegation Assembly on Saturday, October 17th, Second. 2020. Motion is by Mr. Daly, second by Mr. Thomas. Is there any discussion? Please vote. You're stuck. Well, there it is. Okay, motion carries 5 0. After the fact for Clark Consulting and Training, do I have a motion? I'll move the governing board approve payment of $9,285.71 to Clark Consulting and Training Incorporated for performance training and coaching of district instructional staff as Motion is made by Mr. Johnson, second by Mrs. Solis. Is there any discussion? Please vote. Motion carries 4 1. Well, that's a let's see. <laughs> okay, the next one will be after the fact, learn by doing incorporated. software license and virtual services as presented. I'll second. Motion is made by Mr. Johnson, second by Mrs. Solis. Is there any discussion? Please vote. Motion carries 4-1. Fiscal year 20 annual financial report. I move to approve the FY1920 uh, school district annual financial report as presented. I'll second. Motion was made by Mr. Thomas, second by Mr. Daly. Is there any discussion? Please vote.
motion carries 5-0. The fiscal year 21 FUSD and CAVIT IGA, do I have a motion? I'll move the governing board dot, 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 and I'll throw in the rest that we accept the uh, intergovernmental agreement between FUSD and CAVIT. I'll second. <laughs> motion is made by Mr. Johnson, second by Mrs. Solis. Is there any discussion? Please vote. Do we need to edit my motion? Or no, we're okay. <laughs> okay, motion carries 5 0. Oops. Any items for future agendas for anybody? Are we ready to take this out on the road again so we can get out to Santan? Um, that would be up to IT. We will look at it. Okay. The next regular board meeting will be held on Tuesday, November 10th, 2020 in the Florence Unified School District Administration Building Auditorium, 1000 South Main Street, Florence, Arizona. The work study session will begin at 5.30 p.m. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion is made by Mr. Thomas, second by Mrs. Solis. Is there any discussion? Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. Turn me off already. Nathan. Nathan. Paging Nathan. Can I have your help?